So now we're going to have Mr. Frank Ortiz speak for us. He's a great motivational speaker. He's I've heard him speak before. Really, really good to listen to. And thank you for the breakfast as well, Frank. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Before, thank you for the breakfast. Is Lisa Walsh from 18? She brought the breakfast. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. Really appreciate it. Anyway, before we get started, there's a few things I want to tell you. We're filming today. Why are we filming today? We're filming because I need a live video in my, on my website. I, and I found Julie and Steve Johns to, to do it. So I hope they, that you don't mind being filmed. And afterwards, I don't mind if you say something. Anyway, so this is, <clears throat> before I do anything, I want you to turn to the person to your right and say, you have greatness within you. <laughs> so talking to the back of their head. Oh, yeah. Well, or maybe to the left. Either way, now turn, ver reverse it. <laughs> now, now I want you to say to yourself, I have greatness within me. Now, really mean that because we forget that. We forget we're so great. We do. We don't want to walk around like this but we want to walk around like we really feel good about ourselves. And I'm going to ask you a question, and you just shout whatever comes out of your mouth, but I want you to shout it out. How is business? Great. Very good. <laughs> but now I'll tell you a good answer that I heard some years ago from a guy named Tom Hopkins. Unbelievable. He said, when, sometimes business isn't the way we want it. Is that true? Yes. Sometimes it's fantastic. Right. What's a good answer? It's unbelievable. When the traffic is bad, how's the traffic? Unbelievable. unbelievable. Your marriage? Unbelievable. unbelievable. <laughs> so how is business? There you go. Great. Today's topic. I speak on a lot of topics. Today's topic is about sales. Mastering the, the art of sales and service. We're all salespeople, everyone in this room, everyone outside this room, everybody's a salesperson. You go to Starbucks and somebody says, you want to make that a grande? You go to McDonald's, you want fries with that? You go to church, what's he tell you? You better be good. You're selling you on the idea that religion is good, isn't that? Then he say, also donate a little bit more. The Bible says 10%, why not 12%? He's always selling you on the idea, isn't he? Your kids sell you on the idea, can I... Stay at Susie's house tonight? Come on, she's really good. They're selling you all the time. We're all salespeople. And the number one salesperson in the world, who was it? Jesus. 25 years, 100 years later, we're still talking about what he told us. How would you like to have a business 2,500 years later? They're still talking about it. I went to a doctor. I hadn't been to a doctor in 25, 30 years. Even they're salespeople now. I went to a doctor only because I wanted eye surgery. They said, you have to see your private physician. I said, what is that? So I went and found a private physician to give you the go-ahead. And so they finally did it. But before he left, he said, you know, you need to do this. You need to do that. We can do it today. Two shots for whatever he told me. <laughs> I said, wow, things have changed. <laughs> everybody is selling. But if we want to separate ourselves from the crowd, if we want to be better than everybody else, there are some basic things that we should follow. Basic, because I think, I think they should come natural. One of the things that I think we all have to do, and this is, have you ever heard, I had you from hello? Yeah. Where's that from? Anybody? I, you had Jerry me from Maguire. Jerry Maguire. What does that mean? You had me from hello. That means that the minute they saw each other, there was a connection. And when we approach a customer's house, apartment, office, Starbucks, wherever we go, it should be, you had me from hello. That's the feeling they should have. Oh, God. You know, Terry, I see you during the meetings, but I'm so glad you met with me. It should be something more than what we do here. Even though we know each other, when, that, when you're ready to go after that person, and I don't say go after, but when you're <laughs> ready to go, when you're ready to do business with someone, and you say, let's meet at Starbucks. I just want to tell you about my business. It should be more than kickback. It should, wow. Every, your mannerism, your smile, everything should exude that feeling. I am so happy that you're here to meet with me. That should be immediately. The other thing, you've heard people say, 
oh, this guy can sell ice to a nice Eskimo. He's just fantastic. I don't sort of believe that. I mean, everyone can sell something to someone. Even a blind squirrel finds an acorn sometimes, you know. But if you, <laughs> well, they do sometimes. <laughs> but if you really want success in selling, you have to have a love, a passion for what you're doing. And you have to develop that passion because some of us fell into positions or jobs that we didn't aspire for. We didn't think about when we were in college, I'm going to sell real estate. Maybe you had other plans, but you develop this love. Oh, and now you start to love it because you have this passion for it. And what it does, it makes you better because you love it. So no one can be successful at selling or doing anything unless they have that passion, unless they have that love. And you can develop it. And along with this passion and this love, you have to believe in the products that you sell. You have to buy what you sell. And let me give you an example. When I was in 1968, I won't tell you how old I was then, but in 1968, I went and bought a brand new Mustang right out of the showroom, drove it to where I was working, had the tires taken off, and put four brand new tires. The tires were fantastic. They were brand new. They were Firestone tires. But I was selling tires at the time, and I wanted to experience all the stuff I've been telling people. And at the time, in 1968, the strongest kind of tires that they made were nylon cord tires. People used to love them, but they used to hate them. And why did they hate them? Because they were nylon. And when nylon sat in the morning, some of the older people can attest to this, it was like driving blocks, boom, 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 because the, the, the nylon set at night. And so people would say, no, I don't want to buy those, those nylon cord tires. I don't want them. I said, no, we were told, at least I was told, these nylon cord tires don't do that. So I would tell people the same thing. So when I bought this brand new car, I put those blocks of tires on my car. They weren't blocks. I found out they were just as good as I was telling the people. So you have to believe in the product that you're selling. You have to buy the product you're selling. As an example, if for all these years you've been doing something else and all of a sudden you become a farmer's agent because they're always recruiting. So now, <laughs> so now you're a farmer's agent and maybe you had 25 year gold medal from State Farm because you've been a member. Well, if you're gonna be successful at farmers, I would drop that gold medal from farmers, State Farm, whatever it's called, and start being a farmer's uh, customer because you have to own it. You have to believe in it because otherwise you cannot sell it and be convincing. I was in an office in Corona about a few years ago, six, seven years ago, at a real estate office. And I was waiting to meet someone there. So while I'm there, this little Mexican couple walks in. They ask the real estate agent, she says, they tell her, I'd like to, we'd like to sell our house. And the real estate agent says, is your house underwater? The guy looks at his wife, says, no, it's here in Corona. <laughs> Well, he didn't, he didn't know which he's underwater. Sometimes, because in our industry, because in our trade, all those terms are, you know, they're just normal. But when you're talking to a customer, exfoliate your skin, you know, annuities, term life, whole life, all these things, they don't mean anything to anybody. I remember when I was newly married, and this financial guy comes over to the house, and he tells, tells annuities, you want annuity? I didn't know what they were, but in front of my wife, I didn't want to sound like a dummy. I said, yeah, no, I don't, I'm not annuities today. And so, <laughs> <laughs> so he left. My wife says, what, what's, what's, what is annuities? You know, you said you knew what to wear. I said, well, that's that stuff that happens when you sit down for a long time. You know, <laughs> I, I had no idea what there was. But, but here's the thing. It's good to use those terms as long as you follow it up with something that, you're, that the customer knows. You shouldn't ask them, do you know what annuities are? Don't put people on the spot. I don't know if you ever saw this movie, Margin Call. Anybody ever see the movie Margin Call? It's about Lehman Brothers. Lehman Brothers is that big brokerage firm in New York that went broke in 2005 or 2000, whatever it was. It was the biggest bankruptcy in the United States. Anyway, <clears throat> Margin Call, I'll be brief, but it's, it, this is a young two guys were hired that were rocket scientists. They're ready to go to jet propulsion laboratories, but Wall Street sucked them up, paid them more money. So there's young guys. One of the guys is fantastic on the computer. He's finding all the problems that the Lehman Brothers has. 
And one guy says, I'm going to go, let's go drink. No, I want to stay because he's found something. He said, I'll meet you a, a little bit later. So around 12 o'clock night at midnight, he calls him at the bar. He said, you know, you should tell our boss, our immediate boss, that there's something wrong. This thing's about ready to collapse. The house is on fire, tells him. What did you find? He said, well, you better come down. So they come down to the office. The boss and the little guy find out, wow, this thing's on fire. So they call for a meeting. The, the, the guy was a high-level guy, but he calls for a meeting. The CEO comes. They have a meeting at 2 o'clock in the morning. This CEO says, okay, who called for this meeting? They got me out of bed at 12 o'clock midnight, and here we are having this meeting. Who called for this meeting? John. Well, who's John? He just started not that long ago, but he's the analytical guy that knows a lot. Okay, John, tell me what's wrong. And John starts saying, well, the ratio to this and that, the CEO stops him. He said, look, I may be the CEO. Doesn't mean I'm the smartest guy on the planet. Just means that I've got good insights. I can manage people. So he said, don't talk to me that way. Talk to me like you're talking to the dog, your dog. Because that's how I understand. I don't understand all this other stuff. So talk to the customer like you're talking to a dog. I don't know. That's that the right <laughs> philosophy. But let's not talk over their head because we lose them. And, and when people get lost, they're not going to tell you. I, I don't, most people are not going to say, I don't know what you're talking about. So we've got to talk in terms that people understand. They say that <clears throat> all, these, all the things that we talk about when we sell, when we sell, we talk about features and we talk about benefits. That's been the basics since 19-whatever when people started to sell. What does that mean? That means like when I used to sell tires, I used to tell people this tire has 1,752 sifes. But if I just said that, that wouldn't, what sifes? Sound like a disease. <laughs> but I used to say these are the sifes are the cuts on the tire. They form the tread design. And every time you put the brakes on, the traction, and there's water, this throws out the water off the sides. It, like, dissipates the water. So the more sifes this tire has, the better, the safer. Now that makes sense to the customer. That makes, okay, that, that's good. So it's always the features and the benefits. I used to tell people, this tire's a Z-rated, Y-rated. What does that mean? Nothing to no one. But if I told them this tire has been tested at 149 miles an hour, and people say, well, I don't go 149 miles an hour. But when you go to the desert, to Las Vegas, at 80 miles an hour, you can rest assured that tire's not going to blow out. And all these tires have been tested throughout the whole world. The same standard form rating is in Germany, where the Autobahn goes, people go 150 miles an hour. Selling should be an educational process for the customer. It should be fun. It should be exciting. When the customer leaves you, or your office, or wherever you're doing, wow, I didn't know all this. I didn't know all that. They should leave feeling like they've been educated by someone that cares, that someone's telling them something that they've never, ever known about. And we've got to do that continuously all the time. And why are people scared of salespeople? I'll tell you why they're scared. Because they think they're afraid of you, all of you. They're afraid. Why? Because they don't want to make a mistake. They're afraid of the unknown. They don't want to incur new debt. They don't want to buy something that they can't afford. They're afraid to be lied to because they've been lied to before. So they're afraid of all these kinds of things. So you should be aware of those kinds of things that people are afraid of salespeople. So when you're trying to set an appointment, don't be shocked. Well, you know, call me whenever, but uh, call me. <laughs> it's because we haven't made them feel at ease. We haven't made them feel that we're honest. <clears throat> That we're, you know, we want to take care of them. So it's really important that if you're really, these are basic things that you say, well, I do them all the time. Do we do them all the time? I don't know. And these are the things that are so important when you're trying to sell. Excuse me. They say that words that we should stay away from when we're trying to sell, especially the big items. We shouldn't talk about price. We shouldn't talk about cost. What do we talk about then? Value, Value total investment, amount investment. We shouldn't talk about down payments. That's scary. Oh, down payment. Your initial investment. Your initial amount. We shouldn't talk about <clears throat> monthly payments because the first thing people think about monthly payments is, oh, man, you picture yourself at the table or at their desk writing checks out every month. Here goes another one. So what do we say? M monthly investment. Monthly, monthly amount. And we should never talk about contracts. 
the first thing people think is contract. Oh, am I going to be obligated for 100 years? It's paperwork. We've got to fill out paperwork. We have to fill out a form. So those are some of the basic things of, that you shouldn't talk about. But more than anything, people can, can accept a lot of things. But there's a few things. Service. When I was, some of you don't know what I did. But I'm not going to go into tell you a lot. <laughs> but one of my jobs, aside from selling tires, I became a manager of a store, district manager, regional manager, vice president of a company. But my job really never changed. When I was a manager of a store, I did this much. When I was district, this much. Regional, this much. It just expanded, but the job was still the same. So I would go into stores that sometimes only visited two or three times a year. And my job was sometimes just, to, at least I thought, to stand at the front of the store for at least a few minutes and absorb what's going on, the employees, the way the store looked, everything. So I would say, well, maybe that wall has to be changed. Maybe this has to happen. What's wrong with that employee? How come he's not smiling? Hawk all these things. And oftentimes, I would turn around, and I'd see customers coming in the front door carrying a battery, carrying a starter. They were farmers. They were mechanics. They were dirty. But I saw them carrying this thing. I'd get the battery. I'd take it to the parts counter, which is about 60 feet away. They said, no, 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 you're all clean. No, 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 I don't care. I carry a battery. Because I always felt that I was a servant to the public. I still feel like I'm a servant to the public. If you came to one of my seminars and you wanted coffee, I'd go serve you a cup of coffee. Why? Because I feel like I'm a servant to you. As long as I have to need you, as long as you need to sell people something, you are no more than the servant. Even though we get this big head and we're earning six figures and we drive this big fancy BMW, you're still a servant, whether you like to hear it or not. And the minute you lose that fact that you're a servant, people can detect it. Oh, this guy thinks he's hot stuff. He thinks his stuff don't stink. It does. <laughs> and those are the things that we should continuously remember that no matter how big we think we are, we're no better than anyone else. If they say Jesus washed the apostles' feet, didn't he? Yes. Yes. Well, I'm not about to wash your feet, but I'll, <laughs> I'll serve you coffee. <laughs> I'll do other things. But that's how you feel. You have to feel like, wow, I'll do that for you. Let me take that for you. And when people detect that in you, there's a, there's a difference. The big gurus tell you all kinds of stuff. Stand like this, you know, when you're going to sell. Use these fancy words. Do all these things. Those are good things. You can never stop and listen to any of that good stuff. But if you follow some basic things in selling, I guarantee you're going to be a success. Because people want sincerity. They want honesty. And they want your excitement. They want you to feel what you're selling. Those are all part of the things that people want. Zig Ziglar, the grandfather's motivational speaker, used to say, the sweetest name in any language is a customer's name. And if you remember someone's name, that tells that person so much because they, they, they took the time to listen to that customer, the name. Even in this room, if you've been here more than twice, you should know everybody's name because that tells that other person, hey, he cares about me. To, list, to know my name, I've only seen him twice, but he knows my name. And when you talk to customers that way in their name, that means a lot. I used to manage 1,300 employees. 95% of the time when I walked in the store, I would say, hey, Gail, nice to, nice to see you again. And they were always a little surprised. How come I remember the name? Because I thought it was important to remember their name. And those are the things that really mean something. Let me show you something. We spend a great deal of time, energy, in trying to develop new customers. But a lot of times, we have a gold mine with the existing customers that we have. But we lose them because we're not taking care of them. Now they become old hat. Oh, yeah, it's OK. I don't have to put on that big smile anymore because you, you've been around a couple of years. But I used to, on top of managing 132 stores, I used to have 14 of my own stores for 14 years. I used to go to vendors, did quite a bit of business with them. And when at first, oh, yeah, yeah, Frank, come on, come on. And after a while, they sent me some, some little guy that sort of ignored me. Well, I never complained. I just didn't go back. So a lot of people are the same way. You don't complain, you just don't go back. This has been around for 100 years. Why do we lose customers? 1% die. 3% move. 
5% are influenced by friends to go try this, go do this. I got this Geico insurance, the best insurance ever, cheap. And so you go. 9% are lured, lured away by competitors, you know, prudential insurance, whatever it is. And 14% are dissatisfied with the product. But the biggest percent, why we lose, is an indifference. What is indifference? A lack. A lack of concern. A lack of importance. We don't treat them like we used to treat them. I, I'm feeling like, oh, well, he's old hat. I don't have to cater to you. I don't have to send you little gifts for Christmas. I don't have to do all these things. And here we have this gold mine of customers that could help us expand our business this much if we treated them always like we should be treating people. And that's when you become a real success, when you treat people the way you like to be treated. And, and we go around crazy, Facebook, all this media trying to get more customers. We have customers. Why aren't we taking care of them? I'm going to tell you, okay, i got to close it, I guess. I don't know, I can't see. I just got new eyes, I still can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you one story, and then I'm going to come back. With them. This is, because of all the things I've talked about, this is the key to real success. And this is a little story, but in a big way. One of the positions I held was I was a district manager. And I was at a store in East Los Angeles, and the company was having a contest for the employees. So my job as a district manager is to go around the stores and, and promote the contest to all the employees. So I'm in the back room of the store. It has about 20 employees before the store opens. I'm not telling them, look, this company is offering, a, back then, this is 30 years ago, a 32-inch TV, which is the biggest TV back then. 32-inch, probably a $1,000 TV, maybe more at that time. But whoever sells the most wax, bottles of wax, the wax company is giving this free TV. So a young lady by the name of Martha raises her hand and says, I'm going to win that TV. Well, Martha, I said, this TV is not, this contest isn't just for this store. This is for 77 stores that the company had at the time. And she says, I'm going to win that TV. I said, Martha, you know, because here we're having this meeting. I said, how could you say that? She says, well, I've got a six-year-old boy. We live in a tiny little apartment. And I could never face him. We don't have a TV. I could never face him if I didn't win that TV. So the contest started. Needless to say, Martha started selling wax like you've never seen wax sold before. <laughs> Unbelievable. We're to the point where we had to have special shipments delivered to that store. So about a week before the contest is over, I go to the store, and Martha's selling wax like crazy. I said, Martha, I think you can slow down, because I think you've got it in the bag. No. She kept going. So the contest ends. Here's a remarkable part. This happened 30 years ago. I still I can't believe it. Martha sold 3,200 bottles of wax in one month. One month. The closest person to her was a store in Arizona that sold like 270. <laughs> Can you believe that? What is that called? It's called burning desire. When you have burning desire, you can do things you can't even imagine you can do. And when, when I awarded her that television, it was almost heartfelt. I said, wow, to have done that, is, what an accomplishment. Her name isn't going to go in lights anywhere. But to me, it was unbelievable. 3,200 bottles of wax. So because you have this burning desire, not just a desire, but a burning desire to do something. And we're all capable of doing so much. When we said there's greatness within you, there is greatness within you. Who would have thought this little girl that was young could do that? So we all have greatness within us. Now it's up to us to go out there and do something about it. But you have to remember these key elements. I had you from hello. That makes a big thing, doesn't it? Because it shows that you really want that business, that you believe in the product that you're selling. It's really key that you believe in what you're selling and that you talk in terms of people that understand what you're saying. You don't want to talk over their head. You can sound intelligent without sounding sort of like I know it all. And, and most of all, I think you have to be honest continuously, and you have to have that attitude of service, that I, you're the greatest person in the world just for doing business with me. And when that people start to feel that way, your business, whatever it is, is going to be a big-time success. So I appreciate your attention. It's great to be here this morning. I love coming here anyway, especially to speak to you. 
Have a great day. Have a great sales. Thank you. <laughs>